by surprise. It took us 16 hours yeah, uh, for the storm to go over and it remained a hurricane the entire time. Just absolutely incredible. I'm kind of going back in time through the, the lifespan of the storm when Ida first developed into a depression that was just to the southwest of Jamaica. And remember, earlier earl, earlier computer model runs during the very initial uh, kind of development stages back when it was just an invest and still more of an unorganized wave. If you remember, we were talking about a ridge of high pressure that would be building in it. It would be possible that we would see the storm either clip the northern part of the Yucatan or come into the southern part of the Yucatan and move up toward Mexico or maybe Texas. And that was the early stages. As soon as the computer models really started to get a better grasp of where the storm was going to go, they almost immediately started to lock in on South Louisiana. And that's exactly what it did. But this is the center line track of the center of the storm. And notice again, as we have said, it does not follow a perfectly straight line. There are little wobbles here and there throughout the uh, existence of the storm, especially as it started to move on land. And that wobble one way or the other was going to be huge in just how strong the winds would be in the metro area. We kept saying that it really wasn't going to play too much of a factor for our coast, which would be you know, for lack of a better term, just devastated catastrophically with what the winds and the surge would be bringing in. And it always looked like probably the river parishes would be hit hard as well, assuming that the storm would be moving a little bit faster, but it slowed down. And notice this little wobble that it did start to take at one point. Remember, when it started to make this more northerly turn, that's when we realized it was slowing down. It almost looked at some images on radar that it had gone stationary. It was moving, but it had slowed down at a considerable, almost like a snail's pace at only nine miles an hour. And notice that wobble did put it a little bit closer for a time across the metro area, and so the winds responded and picked up a bit. And there were these little wobbles back and forth as it slowly moved across the river parishes and then up and through the Florida parishes. But yes, it took from landfall at Port Fouchon 1155 on Sunday morning all the way to finally exiting the state. And at that point is when it was downgraded to a tropical storm at 4 a.m. this morning. So it spent 16 hours through the state of Louisiana to go from the coast to southwestern Mississippi. And at that entire duration, it was a hurricane. It was weakening, but it was a hurricane. Remember when it was just to the west of the city, it was still a category three as it was finally moving up into the uh, more uh, near uh, Lake Maurepas, past Manchac and up toward Hammond. It was still a two, then began to weaken to a one after midnight. And then, as I said, it continued up as a still category one hurricane before finally becoming a tropical storm once it reached Mississippi. A far nicer day today. And as we start to assess what damage occurred, we can get a better idea of what is now in the long term for our recovery. And again, this was not a Katrina. The city is livable. We can get back to most structures. I know there are a lot of folks that had some devastating damage and obviously much more catastrophic across the coast, the river parishes, but even here in the city in the metro area, uh, there was some significant damage to many folks. But again, looking out over downtown right now, the city is livable. It is not as though we cannot get in there. So I'm hoping that recovery efforts on the large scale uh, maybe can happen a little bit sooner. A lot of folks are kind of comparing how long it took for power and uh, different resources, utilities to come back after Katrina. But remember, we had weeks before we could even get back into the city. That's not the case. We can already get back into the city and begin that recovery process. So where is Ida right now? Well, as of the four o'clock advisory, it is down to a tropical depression. We still have some of the remnant moisture. Notice it is just to the north now of uh, Jackson. We still have a little bit of the remnant moisture kind of flowing in mainly just some cloudiness at times as most of the storms associated are now well to our east. Still have a few little bands of scattered showers moving through and at times a few more scattered isolated showers. Doesn't look to be anything very heavy kind of passing through the area, but in terms of any intense rain that is gone and thankfully it looks like we will see a quieting forecast 
through the next several days and maybe even a little bit better of a feel to the forecast. Take a look at our high res computer model. Again, a few scattered showers here and there through the rest of the evening and into tonight. Might still have a few more as these little boundaries are still kind of pushing through. Might initiate some scattered storms along them. Uh, plenty of moisture as well as daytime heating. And at times, the uh, model indicating maybe a bit more activity kind of focused in along the coastline by early tomorrow morning. And then pushing down to the south, we are going to start to see a little bit of a pattern shift in the upper parts of the atmosphere that will hopefully work to our advantage. We had that upper trough I was talking about. We would have liked to have seen this come down a little bit sooner, and it is now sinking south.